and uh, underwater environments that we have added the whole new layer to the battlefield. So you can see now that I'm wearing a scuba suit. There's a detailed sea bottom with, uh, with life. You can see fish here and also plants and caustic effects on, on the stones and on the wrecks, wreckage. Uh, this, this type of environment gives us an opportunity to include more infiltration style gameplay and in this mission what I'm going to show you is also the customization of uh, equipment. As you can see here there are two ships parked near a pyre and I'm going to and I'm, my, my task is to destroy them. So I'm not going to go in there like this because they are guarded. Instead, I'm going to come out and try to try to find someone here who whom will I, who I will kill and take his uniform. So as you can see there's a little camp over there. And if if I'm lucky, yeah. So I'm just gonna run to the guy. As you can see, we have added ragdoll animations for, for, for death soldiers. And I will change the uniform. Oh, sorry. And now I have changed the uniform and I can go to the enemy camp uh, and the enemy will think I'm one of them. Uh, actually, this guy is in his underwear. And that doesn't mean we want to show naked people, that means we uh, you can customize your soldier's outfit. You can basically customize the uniform, the headgear. So as you see, we are in kind of a future, future soldier en environment. And this, uh, these helmets contain visual aids for battlefield awareness. Uh, also, you can customize your ballistic vest or these kind of backpack equipment to carry more loads. Uh, all these, all these uh, customizations have direct impact on the gameplay. Um, I will also put a satchel here. We can attach these to vehicles now. And I will go through the enemy camp completely undetected. And I will steal the car over there to get out. So this is work in progress interior rear of the car. Uh, we've also added this uh, animation of the hands of the steering wheel, which we didn't have before. And that pretty much concludes this part. The next part, uh, in the next part, I will show you customization weapons that also has direct inf influence on the gameplay. So with a bit of patience, we're gonna get that. This is actually one of our diners uh, shooting uh, the new GM6 Lynx anti-material rifle. So we always try to get in touch with things if, if it's possible to go to, to, to the producers and uh, uh, photograph the things, record the sounds and stuff like that. What you see now is the basic EBR rifle with very simple optics. If I look through it, I can see that it is a rangefinder, it's very simple and I see that it's not difficult to hit a target that is very close. But if I wanna, for example, snipe targets near this church, uh, I have really, it's really not very easy. Well, I've been practicing for three days now, but it's not very easy. You can see it's not very simple for this task, but I can change it to sni sniper optical sights and not only that the appearance of the gun changed as you can see also the optics work quite differently you see i've improved zoom and it's much more easy to actually hit to actually snipe targets uh, since we are a military simulator we also simulate a ballistic curve and for that we need zeroing. Zeroing is kind of setting that you can see here. And when you aim, 
you actually aim, you actually see a line, but uh, the wallet goes on a curve. So to compensate for it, the zeroing is kind of setting by which you set the distance of the target from you. And I will show you a short example. So this is, uh, this is the optics for the grenade launcher. And if I change the, op the, the zeroing, the barrel of the gun changes, but technically it is what moves. So this group of targets is about 100 meters from me. And if I shoot at them with zeroing to set 200, perfect. This is another group back there. It's about 250 meters from me. So if I, if I use the same zeroing setting, I, I see that I have it here, which is not perfect. So I need to enhance the setting to 100. Aim a little bit above them because they are 250. And bam, right? So uh, this, this kind of customization has a direct impact on the gameplay and also it gives the player more freedom in choosing what weapon he wants to use with what kind of accessories. So we are not going to create like uh, uh, 80 different weapons but a lesser number with more accessories that can be attached to them. Another thing uh, our f fans will be probably happy to see is the vehicle collisions. We didn't have that. Uh, since now and the vehicles when they collided with with each other it was very it felt very unnatural and now as you can, can see with this boat we we can for example ram this boy and it behaves quite naturally we of course we work on this uh, for ground vehicles as well but we still have to tweak it and uh, we didn't want to present it yet but we definitely working on it you can also see when you watch from the side that the ship is actually interacting with waves and the waves are again influenced by the wind settings. Uh, probably the last thing you would like to see is combat because that's what Arma is about. And uh, this mission that I'm going to show you is pretty much not pre-scripted. It's, it's what you can create in the editor. As you probably know, Arma comes with editor that has almost complete development tools that we offer to our users. And this simple mission is here to show that it's pretty much in the state where you can create basic missions. So what I'm doing now is going with four guys to the village called Kaminia. Actually the setting of the game is a Greek island of Limnos with, with 400 square kilometers of, of, of ground, of battlefield, and also some say 100, 150 square kilometers of underwater battlefield. The underwater combat will also feature swimmer delivery vehicles, which is a four-person carrier kind of open submarine that can deliver combatants behind enemy lines and sorry I have to concentrate a bit <laughs> and we do not, do not actually plan to have large submarines because we do not play this kind of heavy oops So you can see it's pretty much a similar game, but uh, we want to make it a bit more accessible to the uh, general player, not by cutting down the features, but rather by making the controls simpler. So the UI, UI that you see now is to work in progress, and that's one of the things we want to concentrate on to make this game more accessible. Let, let me use my grenade launcher. I would be dead. <laughs> so, I don't know if we still have time. I could show, show you some special weaponry. And that's uh, 
that uh, anti-material rifles, uh, anti-personal mines, bouncing mines, and artillery support. So now you see I'm wielding the GM6 anti-material rifle linked with recoil. You can see it with the barrel. And I have thermal imaging optics, which means I can see hot things as black. And you see that the car actually has a hot engine. And if I hit it, it stops. And that means I've practically disabled it for, for further use. So you can actually hunt down cars in Arma 3 and you can, can actually see the engines, the important part to hit it with this thermal imaging optics. Next thing will be these bouncing mines. Uh, that's a really nasty weapon. It's a mine that when it gets triggered, it first jumps to about 1.5 meter and then it explodes. And therefore it wreaks, uh, wreaks more havoc than just ordinary mine. I have to be really very careful around them because I can trigger them myself, obviously. And since I've planted all three of them, I'm gonna move back because I know that there is uh, enemy infantry coming in. So I'm, so I'm gonna run toward the hill over there. As you can see, the, the environment, the houses are kind of worn, kind of destroyed. That's because the, the game is set in uh, 30, 40 years in the future, where in, a, in kind of World War III, Clash of Civilizations scenario. And so imagine World War taking 15, 20 years. And now I will slow the time. This tiny thing is the mine. And if you watch closely, you just saw it jump up and then it glowed. So we simulate even these uh, tiny details. And I'm gonna run away now to show you the artillery support. So now I'm standing on the hill above the village. You can see that this, this, this village is about a mid-sized village on our island. We have about uh, 50 or 60 of such smaller to, 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 to larger villages. But we also plan to have many farms, abandoned factories, tourist resorts in the countryside, so that it's, uh, so it's really filled with objects, not only you know, barren. And here you see two tanks. And I can actually call artillery support with high explosive shells, burst of four. It's these two guys, they are five kilometers away. And now, now they are aiming at the position I specified and they are, they are firing their rounds. So in between, I will show you some more ragdoll animations with this poor guy. And you see, oh, bam. So this is, this is not really, really the final state, but it's, a, it's a very recent in Arma and it gives it more kind of simulation. And we can see that the shells are already pounding the ground around the tanks. And I think we got a hit there. You can see the trees are going down. Uh, also, the, the environment will be destructible in the sense that the houses would actually collapse when they, when they get hit. And we had that in Arma 2 already, but we hope to improve it yet. So I think we're done with these guys. Let me, let me watch a little closer. Yeah, we got two hits. Okay, so thank you for your time, guys. I hope you enjoyed it.